Hey guys, uh, welcome to Living Tomorrow Today. My name is Julio and Nicole is behind the camera. And it's been a few days, actually it's been like a few weeks <laughs> since we put out a video and I wanted to fill you in on what's going on and some of the stuff that we've done as we prepare to hit the road full time in our RV, which is four months away from now. Um, so right here, you can see that we have the RV on the side of our house. Uh, and the reason for that is because we plan on moving into the RV as we prepare the house for sale. We want to basically start living out of the RV so we can clean and, and get rid of furniture and everything and prep the house for sale without having to live in it because we've done that before and it's not fun and if you ever sold a house you know that that's the worst when somebody has to come look at it and you gotta stage it and everything so anyways it's been raining for several days and finally we had a break for like the past maybe three days or so and it's gonna start raining again <laughs> yeah and it's gonna start raining again so we have to do what we're doing right now and as you can see that where the truck is right now there's a whole bunch of ruts that's because i tried moving the rv and the truck when it was too wet and um, i ended up getting stuck and uh, making those those little trails you can see over there so what we have decided to do now that the ground is a little dry we went to walmart and we bought these uh i think 12 by 12 bricks uh stones yeah we bought these brick pavers they were like a dollar 50 or so um at walmart so the idea is that we want to put both tires on, bo on, e on both sides, of course, on top of these bricks instead of on the grass. That way we can level the RV much easier instead of just using the grass where it's going to sink a little more on either side. That was basically our cheap solution to Yeah, this is our pad. cheap solution to moving to the RV. Another thing that we did is that we had an electrician. It's gonna be loud because the AC is going on, but we had an electrician install a 50 amp plug for our RV. And then this is our church protector that we have that my parents bought us. Thank you, mom and dad. That was a Christmas gift. So now, once we have the RV set up, we can have full power to the RV. So that is kind of where we are right now. Um, we're trying to put the RV on some bricks so that we can level it right. We're still using the Anderson chocks that we have. I'll put a link in the description um, because these are really easy to level. They're only gonna work on something firm like the brick. These don't work very well on soft grass. And really, I, I imagine nothing really works that well on soft grass. So we had talked about different things like do we want to like actually lay out concrete, like a whole concrete pad? That's too expensive. And then of course, once we sell the house, somebody may not just want a big old slab of concrete outside of the, uh, the porch. So this was our cheap fix and I think it's gonna work out really well and um, another reason that we installed the uh, 50 the 50 amp power is because we had talked about maybe moving into a very close RV park and then doing what we're doing with the house but then we were like well that's gonna cost us four or five hundred dollars a month until we leave why don't we just make the investment on the power and then we don't have to pay all that money so that's what we ended up doing and I think it's gonna work out really well we'll let you know how it goes but uh, that's where that's where we are right now that way if we still need stuff in the house we have easy access and we're probably still going to use the restrooms of course in the house it's just easier and we don't have a dump station so uh, that's the plan but we want as much as possible moving to the rv and uh, one it helps us kind of get used to living in the rv the two we can get the house ready and all that stuff so helps it stay clean longer yeah helps it stay clean so that is the plan if you guys are in a position where you can move into your rv if you already purchased it before you sell your home and you happen to live out in the country like we do this might be a good solution for you get some bricks and uh, roll it over roll your rv over them and then uh, you can use your anderson chocks if you have those to uh, level out your rv so we're going to finish doing that right now and uh let's, we'll see how it goes set another one back here so I can back up a little bit more because I need to put the Anderson trucks okay. to the front. So let me grab another brick. Yeah. 
So because of the way uh, our land kind of leans this way a little bit, I'm only going to use the chocks on this side so that I can lift the RV so that it's even, hopefully. So what we're going to do now is use this leveler to see how much higher we need to raise um, the RV. So pretty simple, just put it, I just use this wall right here. Holy cow, that's like almost perfect. I think it can go up a tiny little bit. I mean, see, it, it, it can go like just a tiny bit more if I want it to. I mean, let me just make sure it's not just the warping there. Well, right there, it looks perfect. Good. Yeah, so this is important because the propane needs to be level for the eight for the, uh, refrigerator even though we're gonna use power um, we do need the propane for the heater so because we have power we are going to just use um, our little electric heater electric heaters okay so here is a tip I know I'm gonna look dumb for telling you this but I didn't okay, know we're new um, so I thought that our furnace could work on either propane or power so my whole the whole time I thought that as long as we have 50 amp power, we can have heat. Well, that is not true. Any uh, furnace system in your RV has to have propane in order for it to work. The power is the fan. It's for the blower, but that's it. So if you only have power but no propane, you're just going to be blowing cold air through your, uh, through your furnace. So that is why we're going to use little portable heaters uh, in the RV. So we're not wasting um, So that we're not wasting it because it's not efficient to do that with propane. Um, it'll last a couple of days, depending on how cold it is outside. Um, so that's just a tip. I think in the future, uh, as we as, as we plan on going to like Alaska or Colorado one day, we may get some, maybe like a 50 pound propane tank that we can attach to the outside. That'll be strictly for the furnace, just to help with everything. We'll put the furnace on like 60. Um, even though it'll be like, you know, zero <laughs> outside, so. <laughs> he thinks on 60. Well, it'll be on 60 to break the chill, but we're still gonna use the heat to increase the temperature inside, so. What happened? Me and Ian were running around. <laughs> he was chasing me. I fell. And Eden's over there hiding in the, in the pasture. Love that sunset. That's one of the things I will miss about here. 